In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the Chutes and Ladders Baby Blanket. This is a crochet baby blanket. It is basically a one row repeat and we will create the chutes and the ladders. Like I said, one row repeat, really simple. You'll fly through this in no time. And then a very simple single crochet border to frame this up nicely. We have one row on the border that is basically just a single crochet chain bobble. So we won't be winding our yarn around our hook multiple times. You basically just create a chain and then single crochet back into the next stitch over. And it gives you a nice, simple sort of textured bobble on that border. You can use any yarn and any size hook that corresponds to the size and weight of yarn that you're using. I have chosen to use Lion Brand Ice Cream Yarn and I will show you that in a minute. It's a three weight yarn and then on the border I have a solid sort of light gray blue that kind of matched almost perfectly with that ice cream yarn from the main blanket. It is a four weight acrylic yarn though so the ice cream yarn is a three weight yarn and I just paired it with this four weight yarn. You can use whatever yarn that you have available. You can continue using the ice cream yarn for your border rows as well. It's really up to you. So let's jump right into the yarn and the tutorial for this Shoots and Ladders baby blanket. For this baby blanket, I am using Ice Cream by Lion Brand. This colorway is Cherry's Jubilee. So it's a nice blue, white, and some dark pink, light pink. You will need three skeins of this yarn if you wanna make the same size blanket that I've made. If you're making a, a much larger blanket, obviously you'll need many more balls of this yarn. Each one is 394 yards, so you can kind of measure that out. I am using two full balls of this for the main blanket, and then I have an extra ball to work the border. So if you wanted a much larger blanket, I suggest at least three or four balls of this for the main blanket and an extra to work the border. This stitch pattern is a bit of a yarn eater. So while there's 394 yards in each one of these, it doesn't go as far as you'd like it to with this stitch pattern. I am using a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook the stitch multiple for this pattern is six plus four and then an additional three for the turning chain at the end. So the multiple is six plus four plus three. For my baby blanket, I chained a total of 115 chains, 108 for the multiple of six plus four plus three got me to 115. So for the stitch tutorial, I am just going to chain a sampler in that same multiple. So you can get the stitch pattern down and then we'll be off working on the blanket. Once you have your chain multiple of six plus four plus three, we're going to work two double crochets back into the fourth chain away from the hook. So one, two, three, four into that fourth chain, we're going to work two double crochets. We're going to skip the next two and work a single crochet in the next. We're going to chain three, skip the next two, and work three double crochets into the next. We're going to skip the next two and single crochet in the next. That single crochet is the start of the stitch pattern, so you want a single crochet, chain three, skip two, and a in three double crochets into the next.
skip two. Here we go with the repeat again, single crochet in the next, chain three, skip two, and three double crochet in the next. And then skip two, and then your next stitch would be that single crochet repeat. I am at the end of my little sampler here, so I have three chains left. I'm going to skip two and just work a single crochet at the end. And you should have something that looks like this. Now here is the row repeat, or the pattern repeat, I should say. You're going to chain three, turn into that same base stitch that you chained out of, you're going to work two double crochets. And that chain three to start counts as a double crochet. So essentially you have three double crochets on the end now. We're going to skip those two double crochets from our previous row and single crochet into the top of that last double crochet on the end. We're going to chain three. We're going to skip those two first two chains here of our chain three and work three double crochets into that last chain. So you wanna get into the actual stitch and you wanna work three double crochets right into that chain. We're going to skip two double crochets and work a single crochet into the next. Chain three, skip two chains and three double crochets into that next chain. Skip two double crochets single crochet into the next chain, or the next double crochet, so that next stitch, chain three, skip two chains, three double crochets into the next chain, I'm at the end of my row, I'm going to skip those two double crochets and work a single crochet into the top of the turning chain. So usually that's the third from the bottom, one, two, three, single crochet. You should always have your chains sitting atop the previous row chains. So we're creating our ladders and our chutes are the double crochets that sort of lie on top of the double crochets from our previous row. Let's do one more row together. Chain three, turn, two double crochets into that very base stitch that we chained out of, and that will give us our three double crochets on the end. Skip two double crochets, single crochet into the next. Chain three, Skip two chains and, a, and three double crochets into that third chain. Skip two double crochets, a single crochet into that next stitch, chain three. Skip two chains and three double crochets into the next chain. Skip two double crochets, single crochet into the next chain three. Skip two chains, three double crochets into the next chain. I'm at the end, 
you continue for the entire row in that way. When you get to the end, you'll have these three double crochets at the end. Skip those two and work a single crochet in the top of your turning chain. And that is the repeat. And it's always easy to check if you're on track because like I said, those chains sit right above the previous rows chains and those double crochets sit on top of each other. So you get a nice sort of open closed or ladder shoot, shoot and ladder. So that's the stitch pattern. So next I will show you how to finish off the row so you have your last row so you have a nice straight edge and then we'll put the border on. So save a few yards, maybe two yards, three yards at the end of your last ball of yarn just to put that extra straightening edge on and then we'll work a border together. So you can see I have a nice size blanket. I have just finished my last row working the pattern. I have a good amount of excess yarn here and the only reason I didn't work another few rows was because this was getting so tangled I couldn't even deal with it. Every other stitch I was having to work through this massive yarn ball. I had enough. So once you have the length that you want and you need to put that finishing row just to kind of straighten it up so we can add a nice border, you're going to want to chain seven Turn your work, and we're going to work into those chain spaces. You can either work just into the actual space or into that middle stitch, that middle chain of your chain three, whichever is easiest, and we're just going to work a single crochet, and that will give you a little corner for that edge. Next we're going to do the same thing but we're going to chain five. Find your next chain three and either work into the space or into that middle chain three. And you've got a nice straight edge. Now everybody's tension is different. If you find that a chain five is giving you too much length in between, try a chain four. I always like to write a pattern and work a pattern so it can be a little flexible because everybody's tension is different and sometimes the chain fives for somebody may not work for somebody else. So again, I chain five, I'm going to find that middle single crochet, that middle chain and single crochet into it. And what we're really looking for is just a nice straight edge to finish that last row. So when we go to put our border on, it will already have a straight edge and not the sort of zigzag at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and work all the way down to the last chain three space and I will show you how to create that other corner on the other side. When you get back to the end you'll have your last chain three and then those three double crochets from the previous row. We're going to work the chain five single crochet into the center of that chain three and to create a corner on this end I'm going to chain five and work a double crochet right into the top of the chain three or the turning chain and you'll have a corner on that end as well. You can go ahead and fasten off whatever yarn you have left, weave in your ends, grab your last ball of yarn that we're going to work for the border. If you're also going to be using a contrasting color or a different yarn, go ahead and grab that as well and I will show you how to work the border. So I've got my 
last ball of ice cream yarn and I also am grabbing a sort of gray yarn. It's just um, a loops and threads impeccable. I think the color is called Smoke. It is a four weight yarn. This one is a three weight. A lot of people ask me why do you mix your yarn weights? Well to me these aren't super different from each other. And I like to give my borders a little extra texture, I guess. But it's completely up to you. You can use all ice cream or whatever yarn you've been using for the border. Whatever weight you've been using, you can mix it up a little bit if they're not too different. As long as they're the same fiber and they're relatively close in size, then it won't impact the pattern in this blanket. So I'm going to be using this gray to start with. You can start in any corner that you want. So we're going to start with a slip knot on our hooks and I'm just grabbing the first corner that I have here. This was from our foundation chain row. So I'm going to start right in that corner. So you, there should be a space. I'm going to start in the actual stitch, that first stitch in the corner and I'm just going to slip stitch. I'm going to chain one and this first round is just going to be a single crochet all the way around. In the corners you want three single crochets. So there's my one. Two. And three. When I get back around I will join in that first single crochet. If it's easier for you to keep track where that first stitch is, go ahead and put a stitch marker into that first stitch and that way you'll know that is the stitch you need to join into. And this is helpful if you're using the same yarn that your whole blanket is made of because then it will be or could be difficult to see where that stitch is. So I've got my three single crochets in the corner and I'm just going to evenly work single crochets all along the edges. When I get to these double crochet stitches I like to put two single crochets in those There's no stitch multiple that this has to be. I'm just trying to get a nice even single crochet row all the, all the way around my blanket. So again, it's going to depend on the yarn you're using and your stitch tension as to how many single crochets you need. You just want to space them as evenly as possible all the way around, putting three single crochets in the corner stitches of each corner. So I'm going to go ahead and work this single crochet round all around my blanket and I will show you how to continue after we get this first single crochet border row done. When you get to the point where we did the chains for that last row to straighten it out, you want to work into the top of the third stitch, that is going to be your corner. So when you get to that point, so what I'm going to do here is work into my actual chain stitches and they might be a little bit tight. So one, two, into that next stitch I'm going to work my three single crochets and that will be my corner. And now I can continue and work along that top edge. And I'm working into the stitches 
just to make it a little bit more sturdy. But if it's hard to work into those chains, try just working into the chain space. Just make sure that you're only putting the same amount of stitches in that you have chains for. And again, I'm just gonna work all the way down one single crochet into each stitch all the way across. When you get to your other corner over here, that corner stitch is going to be three from the bottom of this edge. So if it's easier to keep track of your corners with a stitch marker or something, thread a piece of yarn or something into that third stitch from the bottom, you'll know that that is where you need to work your three single crochets for the corner. That way you won't be counting this way. And then you can continue working along your edge like that. So again, one single crochet into each chain or each stitch. On the sides, just work them as evenly as possible. There's no stitch multiple or stitch count that we need. For the border, we're just going to be working single crochets for round one. And I will meet you in just a second at the end. So I'm back around where I started. If I had placed a stitch marker, I would know that this stitch right here is where I need to slip stitch to join. It's the first of those three single crochets that I did for the corner. So I'm just going to pop a slip stitch and I have joined that first single crochet round. We are going to work one more round in single crochet. So we're going to chain one. And I'm going to work a single crochet right back into that same stitch. Single crochet. The next stitch is the middle stitch of my three single crochet corners. In that middle stitch, we're going to put three single crochets. If you want to keep track of your corners, you would put a stitch marker in the second single crochet of that three. So it would be that stitch right there. And that will be your corner. Same goes for each corner. So on these corners, I've got my three stitches. That middle stitch is the stitch that you want to put your three single crochets in. So again, this second round is going to be much easier because you're just working a single crochet into each stitch. You've already gotten your first round done. You've got nice stitches now to work into. Just remember, each corner the actual corner gets three single crochets and that will help kind of round out, square off your corners. So I've worked around a second row of single crochet, joining with a slip stitch where I started, fastening off, and now we can switch to more ice cream. Now if you are using all the same color for your border, then you don't have to fasten off. Just slip stitch to join and we'll continue. But if you are switching colors, grab your new color. I have a slip knot on my hook and I'm just going to join in the single crochet right before where I fastened off. And I'm just going to join with a slip stitch right into that stitch right before where I fastened off. I'm going to work around the corner before starting this new stitch pattern. I just want my corners to be single crochet. So I'm going to chain one single crochet into the same stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. Got to find my corner, my actual corner, so that middle of those three, which is this stitch right here. So I'm going to put a single crochet in the next and three single crochets into the next stitch.
and I'm going to work a single crochet into the next two. Just kind of get around that corner and now we can start the stitch pattern. In the next stitch I'm going to put my hook in, draw up a loop, yarn over, go back through one, and now I'm going to chain three. So just yarn over, pull back through one, yarn over, back through one, yarn over, back through one. So you should have a chain started here and your loop still on your hook. So there's two loops on your hook. Yarn over, go back through two, find your next single crochet or stitch and single crochet into it and you've created a little bobble. So it's a little bit of texture. Into the next, I'm going to pull up a loop, yarn over, back through one, yarn over, back through one, yarn over, back through one, yarn over, back through one. So you should have one, two, three chains there. Yarn over, pull back through both loops on your hook. Find your next stitch. So you can tell I'm working around this stitch. So find the next stitch, single crochet into it. And you've got a little bobble. If you want larger bobbles, you just need to chain more before you finish that single crochet. If you want a smaller little bobble, just chain less. So go through as if to single crochet, yarn over, but only pull back through that first loop on your hook, and then chain three, and then yarn over, pull back through both, find the next stitch, single crochet into it. Your bobble may kind of poke out on the other side, just push it up. And you've got these little bobbles that we're going to create all the way around. So when you get to the corners, you can either do like I have and just stop a little bit short of your corner work your corner in just single crochets and then continue around a few single crochets after that corner and then start working your bobbles. You can space these out even more so put just a few regular single crochets in between your bobbles. It's however you want to customize this to fit the look that you're going for. Alternatively you can just keep going with the single crochet border that looks fantastic as well. I'm going to work a row of this bobble, the single crochet bobble stitch, all the way around except for the corners where I'm just going to keep it a single crochet. Once I get back to my beginning, I'm going to slip stitch to join, and then I'm going to add two more rows in my gray of just single crochet, and then I'll have a nice shoots and ladders blanket. I have finished my border this is what I have left of that solid gray, which I worked two single crochet rows to start, and then I finished my border with two more single crochet rows. So you really do use a lot on the border. I have quite a bit of the ice cream yarn left, that third ball of yarn that I had for these little bobbles. So if you're going to use all one color, then you definitely need almost a full ball for the border just because you're working single crochet stitches and you're working that chain bobble stitch. So this is the final blanket. We've got that nice shoots and ladders stitch running throughout the blanket. And then we just have a nice simple border with a little bit of an accent with those bobbles. Now again, I worked three single crochets into every corner stitch and just a single crochet down the sides for that nice simple border that really frames this blanket well. And I love this stitch as well because it is reversible. So you get the same basic stitch pattern on the back as you have on the front. I hope you enjoyed this Shoots and Ladders Crochet Baby Blanket. I will leave all of my measurements on this blanket and other pattern information down below in the description box, so check that out if you're interested. And until next time, happy crocheting everyone. Bye!